we'll go forward to the news as well, Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. You ready for the news? I am ready. All right, so let's go over to Don 4.0. Of course, the code released. Um, we, we saw the original post a week and a half ago where they talked about the code release and they gave more details. And then Dan put up another post along with the code release. And it was, wasn't quite as detailed, of course, uh, just talking about a few fixes like feedback on the Don 4.0 RAM allocation with, with the new 1% for buying, new 1% fee for buying RAM and then also the 1% fee for when you sell the RAM as well. Um, and he just talked about a slight... Uh, the community members are expressing concern that people will des- derive unjustified profits by buying up cheap RAM before anyone else can get on the chain. And so he, they're recommending, Block One is recommending that those who launch the chain start with a very limited supply of RAM and then gradually increase the RAM over the first few months. Um, I, you know, I think RAM is one of the primary, it almost sounds like RAM is going to be very important, I think, in the long run in terms of voters trying to decide what they want, right? They're going to want cheap RAM when they're trying to run their applications. Uh, and so if they can lower the price of RAM, they'll do so by voting for the block producers who had the most RAM. Eventually, I'm thinking. So it's curious to see how this will work out. It's a good recommendation, um, and we've seen Block 1 make a few of those, uh, also recommending um, a couple other things. But what, what were your thoughts, Blue Jays, about the, the updated RAM part that he mentioned? Yeah, so obviously DAP, DAP teams are going to need RAM, and they're going to have to decide whether or not um, they want to, um, how much of it they're going to offload onto the chain, how much of their program that they're going to have to put on, on their chain, as opposed to how much they're going to be putting on, on storage. So where, where that processing needs to happen, they're going to need on-chain support and they're going to need RAM, um, to, to do those memory allocations that have to be done in, in memory. So it is going to be a scarce resource and it is going to be a gamed resource. So the game theory behind uh, supply and demand is what these latest decisions are about. So uh, there's going to be a market around it and they're just trying to limit the amount of speculation that happens. Uh, For example, somebody tries and buys up all the available RAM when they don't really even need it just for profiting. Yeah, hoarding RAM, basically, uh, which is certainly a concern. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where everybody's in their own best interest, right? Speculators want to make money off of hoping the price will go up. Um, Dan is basically saying that if the producers gradually scale up their RAM over time, then the speculator cannot guarantee what the price of RAM will be in the future because the supply might be a lot higher. Um, so he's suggesting that block producers don't come out right away and blast you know, all, all terabytes of RAM, this and that, and that way, um, that way they, the chain would have way too much RAM for what it actually needs. And so speculators would be more incentivized to buy up all that RAM early on, sit on it, and knowing that the block producers wouldn't have any need to update their RAM for a long time. And then the speculators would hoard the RAM and eventually sell it at a profit. So anyway, uh, that was an interesting part of the Dawn 4.0 release. Um, we'll go through it kind of quickly. The other part where they mentioned about the EOS IO system contract uh, provides the implementation of producer registration, voting, staking, and resource allocation. So basically, they added the parts to the system contract that says no one can unstake or do anything really on the chain until 150 million tokens have cast a vote for at least one producer or proxy. Um, so someone, so everybody, so 150 million tokens worth need to log in and vote for something for the chain to become active, which we've already talked about many times. And also, if the chain wishes to allocate. of the tokens to block one. It will rate limit unstaking to 1% per year. I did see someone in chat who got that confused. They said, well, is that 1% of the total stake per year, which means it would take 100 years for block one to get all their stake? No, what they're saying is 1% will basically 10 million tokens per year. And so they're going to get 100 million tokens total and they'll get 10 million tokens per year will unstake. Uh, We should also mention this was not mentioned in the post, but Block One can vote with the full power of 100 million tokens for block producers at any point. Um, that part they have availability to is just the actual token themselves. They oh, so they will only be able to unstake for purposes of going into the market, but they will be able to vote their entire stake at any time. Right, exactly. So if they decide they want to, if they don't like a certain block producer or someone is a bad actor, I guess they could throw their entire weight behind other block producers and uh, get the bad actor kicked off, I suppose. 
So interesting. Uh, that's what Dan has mentioned in the past, too, is that they, Block 1 will vote in their best interests should they need to. Mm-hmm. Of course, during the chain launch itself, we are not expecting them to take any action whatsoever. Uh, we've talked about that many times as well. Um, and then they also go into uh, anything else in the Dawn 4.0 release that you noticed that was interesting there, Blue Jays? Um, I'm interested in the hacked account recovery and the lost password recovery just because it is just one of those worrying areas for a lot of people uh, losing their private key. And, and this goes a long ways into making this chain more usable. Um, if you lose your password, there is a way, uh, there's a process in which you can recover it. So that that being thought of by the Block 1 team and that being highlighted and always being uh, added to in terms of features is just something that's going to make this chain a lot more usable for regular users out there. And I think that's just awesome. Yeah, and I think it was Boy on the Block Producer panel. He mentioned the grandmas need to be able to use the chain yep. uh, in order for, or need, be, be, need to be able to use the apps that are on the chain in order for it to achieve that mass adoption. You need to make it pretty simple for folks. Um, exactly. even with, yeah, and of course, we'll need some kind of customer service. Maybe that's funded by a worker proposal, but just something very basic, or even the dApps themselves will probably fund that as well. Uh, customer service to help users who do lose their keys or they lose their tokens or whatever the case is. Um, and then the customer service team can go through the process of doing that account recovery, even though it still seems fairly simple. Uh, it, may, it may still be too hard for grandma. So she just yeah. needs to be able to call someone or chat with someone and say, hey, I need my account back. And then the customer service team can go in there. So at least it's possible, though, on this blockchain, whereas yes. other blockchains, it was not. Exactly. Yep. That's certainly a start. Um, one thing, Kevin, uh, in, in the last part of the article, when they mentioned that EOSIO 1.0 is coming soon, I did notice that they've implemented a feature freeze and the next few weeks will just be dedicated to operating and, and testing internal test networks and fixing bugs. So they're not trying to implement anything new at this point in time. Which says that the code that's out there right now is the code, basically, with all the features are already in there for EOSIO 1.0 oh. that we'll be launching on in June. Pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. And the test nets, I believe, are already working as well. So, yeah, um, Dawn 4.0, if you haven't tried it out, if you're not on the test net, you can always go and fool around. Even if you're not a block producer, if you want to just uh, try running a node and seeing what the software is like, it certainly could be a lot of fun. Yeah, And, and there by, are a lot of tutorials. And by oh, no means is the 4.0 code perfect. I've heard uh, some people having some issues, and they're definitely working out things. And with more than two weeks to go, I think we're in good shape. Agreed. Yeah, well put. I've heard the same thing as well. It was a bit of a, well, some some negative feedback about the release. But of course, like you said, there are bugs and whatnot they're trying to fix. And uh, that's good that they're kind of dialing in and spending the last two and a half weeks to three weeks uh, really fixing those bugs. Which is a lot of time in, in, the, in the dev world. So that that's just awesome. Yeah, especially with the amazing team that Block One has too, yeah. of course. So we should go to the next news, talking about bankers leaving the banking world to go to cryptocurrency. And guess which cryptocurrency gained to this banker? That would be EOS, Block One. Uh, so basically, this Australian bank uh, had a CFO, and he left. His name is Rob Jasudison. Rob Jasudison, excuse me there. And he is now the group president and chief operating officer of Block One. What are your thoughts, Blue Jays? I mean, obviously, it's, uh, it's this Rob found that EOS was a good step in his career, and I think he couldn't have made a better choice. Uh, I don't know much about the Commonwealth Bank, uh, but I guess this uh, getting this type of talent in at the higher levels of, of Block One uh, says a lot. Uh, I know people have certain opinions about um, why he might have come, but who knows? People always have reasons. So that, that's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's a two-way thing, too. Uh, in an interview process, the, the, there has to be two people who are interested, right? So, Good point. Yeah, and it, it sounds like the way Brendan Bloomer was talking about it in the press release on the Block One website, um, he was saying that they've been looking for a long time, and they finally found the right individual. Uh, an exciting, an, as he said, an exciting conclusion to our thorough search for the right individual. Excellent. Um, yeah, and it also sounds like uh, this gentleman... Uh, Rob Ducitizen, uh, he said, blockchain will have a transformative impact on most industries in the coming years and will redefine operating models by streamlining businesses while also reducing cost and risk. So this is from our new COO or the new Block One COO, I should say. Uh, he's the one who said that and he's the one from the banking industry. So he will actually begin later this year 
Um, he is not starting yet. He left his other job, but he has to, uh, following his notice period, he will join block one. So yep. he will. Which is normal. Yeah, nice addition. That's normal in the industry. So, yeah. Uh, so we should go forward. Let's talk. Let's talk about Thomas Cox and his sit-down talk with EOS Real. Uh, this was the we mentioned this briefly, and Thomas talked about it uh, at the very beginning of the block producer panel. But basically, one of the members from EOS Real, which is a block producer candidate, flew out to Virginia, drove a long ways, made a long trip to arrive in Blacksburg Sunday, which is yesterday when this is uh, being shot. And they sat down for about three hours and they went over a whole bunch of questions about block producers and candidacy and all kinds of different topics. And they recorded the entire thing for transparency. Um, and also EOS Canada has now put out a summary of what happened as well. Uh, a couple interesting notes, Blue Jays. Did you look through the summary from EOS Canada or have you watched all the videos? It's three hours worth of videos. So there's a lot to see. I did not get a time to watch it this weekend, no. Well, it's, uh, yeah, certainly if you want to spend a, a quality three hours with Thomas Cox and, uh, EOS Real, you should check them out. But so they went through um, the the parity wallet on Ethereum, where 300 million USD was lost and the bug was discovered. Um, there was one interesting thing in here about the block producers love multi sig capability. You know, and, and Thomas talks about how arbitration cannot fix everything. And actually, I thought that that point by Marchin earlier with from Tokenika, he made a very interesting point. I've never thought of personally. I don't know if Thomas has thought about it either, or if anyone has really. But just in terms of DDoSing arbitration, right? Uh, I'm sure a few people have thought about it, but just what what is the solution for that, right? Do we get more arbitrators? I mean, yeah, it, it's a good point. So when you when you do a denial of service, you you basically uh, sub, put in too much vol so much volume that the system is not able to handle it. And what is the case in this point? If we have a pervasive error or a pervasive transaction that we just all need to reverse, or that then that's okay. But if you have uh, the, um, multiple transactions all spanning different types of things that need a different case for each one then that in that case you might have a backlog and if, and, and if that backlog were to happen um, you would in essence DDoS arbitration if we did not have a proper pipeline set up in order to distribute the work everywhere so it, it's a good it's a good uh, it's a good uh, concern and I think uh, I'm glad it was brought out in the show and I hope everyone's watching in the governance area so that we'd be able to mitigate that. Sure. Yeah, and it's, it's tough to say right now what the solution could be. I mean, obviously the idea is that someone would bring a whole bunch of frivolous cases to load up the arbitrators and then the, the real cases would have a hard time getting through uh, or going to backlog. I mean, keep in mind too that there is roughly, uh, Thomas mentioned it before, but to initiate a case costs roughly around $600. So that is going to be uh, a one of the barriers to entry into doing frivolous cases but who knows how that can be gamed as well too sure yeah absolutely and good point too i mean glad you brought that up but it certainly is one of the checks in place that should hopefully help reduce some of that um it, it actually brings us sort of to our next point on the news as well uh, this is from ono it was earlier today and ono put out an interesting steam at post talking about how their code of, code of conduct restricts any type of colluding with other block producer candidates, um, did not specifically mention what was going on, but basically said that many EOS block producers have expressed a desire to cooperate with us, and she's talking about Ono, and have suggested that we share votes with them. Uh, from the principle of fairness, we will not say which ones we're referring to. And then it was it was actually Kiju, who we had on the show a few weeks ago. She's the CEO of Ono, which is a social network building on EOS, if you're not familiar. Um, they rejected the idea, and they don't think that controlling the voting mechanism with regards to block producers forming alliances during the election period is a good move for the EOS ecosystem. So uh, it sounds like behind the scenes there is some of that kind of stuff going on. Uh, and, of course, this is, could be a case where if there's a lot of money involved, maybe a $600 fee for arbitration is not that big of a deal in terms of trying to make sure something happens. Of course, we're speculating again. Uh, we might as well go talk about the moon and the price at this point. But uh, it's an interesting post that they put out. And... I saw it talked about a little bit in the EOSIO governance chat as well. Blue Jays, uh, what did you take from this post? Uh, it was a short post. Uh, it seemed to have been uh, what we would call whistleblowing. Um, and it uh, obviously we don't have any details and all, nothing was published. We also don't have any, uh, we don't know whether this claim is a factual or not. Um, but it is, it is out there. And... Um, it could be real 
and I think putting it out there as part of her code of conduct was the right thing for for uh, for Ono to do, and I think uh, I think um, it was the right thing for her to do, and we'll see how it it evolves things. Yeah, and coming from a stance of whether it is actually happening or not, I mean, of course, like you said, we don't know for sure. We're just reporting the news at this point and what we know and what we see. Um, she went about it the right way in my mind, right? Didn't call anybody out, just sort of said, here's how we take our stance on this, uh, so leave us alone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's the right call. And that sort of also puts out a call to other block producer candidates, like, hey, this is, in our mind is not right, and we're going to uh, call it out a little bit just to make sure it's, it's on everybody's radar. Um, I know Blue Jays, you and I, we've, we've actually received a couple requests in the past from folks who wanted us to sort of investigate more into these kinds of behaviors. Uh, and we try to resist that because whistleblowing is not currently part of our, our goal. It's not part of our goal. Certainly it could be for the health of the network long term. Maybe eventually we would have to get more involved or, or some other entity would, uh, like an investigative journalism entity. Yeah. Uh, neutrality is important when it comes to these kind of things. So let's see how it all uh, good, Well out. said, Kevin. I think the function of whistleblowing and the function of uh, investigative journalism will definitely be needed for the health of this network. Sure, absolutely. It's it's we're basically building a digital commonwealth, right? You have an elected representatives, the block producers. You have the legislature, which is the token holding voters, and then you also have the judicial branch, the arbitrators as well, and then of course the media, and that's us. So yeah, we're, we we're not nobody here is trying to be fake news. We're just trying to you know report and do the best that we can for EOS, empowering EOS first and always. That's our motto. Yeah, it's actually we should mention that more. It's our uh, our new kind of updated mission statement. We're just empowering EOS first and always. That's what we do. Uh, there's no bias in, in what we do, and we're neutral first. So uh, you'll hear more about coming up. And we should talk about, before we go to the meetups, quickly, we should talk about this This particular show has been very long. It's our longest one yet, I think, by far. Uh, going, we're going to pass three hours, most likely. We should say that the last show we do before launch, which will be Monday, May 28th, that will likely be longer. It's going to be a marathon show, <laughs> basically allowing anybody, any block producer candidate who has not been able to get on so far, can get on that show. Uh, we are fully booked, but we are opening up that particular show to any block producer candidate who wants an interview. So let us know. Reach out to us. You can email us, admin at eosgo.io, or you can, uh, send, uh, an, you can send a private telegram message to uh, Blue Jays or myself as well if you'd like to be on that show. So we uh, expect a long night, don't we, Blue Jays? Could be uh, a lot of interviews, but it would certainly be great for everybody to hear from and see their block producer candidates. Yeah. Yeah, at that time, I'm you know it's coming down to the eleventh hour. It's it would be it'd be our pleasure to to represent, give people some uh, airtime that they feel that they need to be on at that time. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Yep, it aligns with our goals as well. I mean, we're here to empower the network, and of course, we want the block producer candidates who are are eager to get on and would like to express themselves and make a name for themselves. We want to be able to make sure they get the chance. So that's why we're doing this. And furthermore, we're going to have more details about our live stream during the launch. Uh, it's coming up soon, and we're looking to make that a global community launch. Um, you can check in. You'll see. You'll hear from folks all around the world, block producer candidates, DAP companies, uh, possibly even some Block One folks. We don't know yet. Um, or people who may or may not know anything about Block One. We'll see. There could be a certain name that you may know of already who may be on the show. <laughs> so anyway, you'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. We're going to uh, sort of talk about it a little more. And also put out a call for anyone who is in the community and would like to check in or is a part of the launch and would like to check in as well. You can uh, reach out to us. There will be a, a form for that as well. So, Blue Jays, uh, anything we're missing here? I, and just a little bit more about that. We, we plan to open a, a group chat on, in, in those few days. Uh, we're, it's not an official war room or anything like that, but it, it's going to be something like, come on, come on live, talk about what you want to talk about. Uh, it could be sort of that information clearinghouse going on as the launch is happening in real time. So uh, that's 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 our plans for it. And like Kevin said, uh, anybody and anybody is is welcome to come on it as long as you you're you're empowering EOS at that point in time. <laughs> right. If you're just sitting back eating chips, we may or may not want to hear your take on it, depending on how into EOS you are, how much you know about it. But uh, you know, we'll probably be eating some chips ourselves here on the show. So what can we say? Right. Yeah. We'll be yeah. Have some and some Mountain champagne. Dude. Mountain Dew, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> Same color, almost, roughly. Yeah. Uh, so let's go to meetups, and then we'll wrap this up, guys. Thank you for sticking with us here. It's been a great night. It's been a long night, but it's been wonderful. These shows are fun. Yeah. Um, 
What meetups are you seeing there, Blue Jay? Um, well, I want to mention the Tulip Conference again, which is happening on the June 7th to 9th. Um, we will definitely be there, Kevin and I, and we hope for it to be a uh, celebration of sorts, uh, getting close to or have already launched the chain. And I think that's going to just going to be a great time. So if you're if you guys want to attend, come and uh, sign up at tulipconf.com. And uh, hopefully it's it's supposed to be a great EOS meetup, uh, a very EOS focused industry meetup. So that, that that's something I'm looking forward to as well. Well said. Yeah, the Tulip Conference should be a lot of fun. It's going to be a big celebration. As you said, there will be a lot of EOS folks there. And we will be celebrating, hopefully, with the chain that has successfully launched and reached its full 150 million tokens that voted. Everything else uh, should be pretty wonderful. Um, talking about other meetups around here, we have, of course, we've talked about the EOS Canada. I'm uh, sorry, the EOS Nation meetups that are happening in Toronto. Uh, Thomas Cox is going out there for, th- for three meetups over two days. And that is starting on the 17th of May, I believe. Yeah, which is this Thursday. Uh, and then he's also doing on the 18th, which is Friday as well. You can go to bp.eosgo.io, and that is a, that is the block producer research site, but there's also a section for meetups, and you can see all the meetups that are happening. If you're in the Toronto area and you'd like to go, this sounds like this will be a big party, a lot of fun. Yeah. Sounds like a good tr- trio of meetings there, a good good uh, good talent up there, and a good think tank up there in the University of Waterloo, York, and Toronto. Yeah, of course, there's one famous name from uh, University of Waterloo, uh, he, he does not work with EOS. His name's Vitalik, uh, Vitalik Buterin, I believe. I don't know if I pronounced his name correctly, but anyway, so there are certainly a lot of uh, excellent technical minds that go up to University of Waterloo, and it's great. That, can you, uh, can we, you imagine yeah. Thomas Cox doing the Badger dance? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was, you know, that, that video went viral, I think, and the cryptocurrency, I'm sure it did. It went viral. <laughs> and that's, you're, you're referring to that Ethereum conference in Toronto. That was like a week ago, and they did that Badger dance. And I cannot see Thomas Cox ever doing the Badger dance. I don't think. I don't think so. I don't know about Dan either. Maybe. Yeah. But, hmm. How about Brendan? I think Brendan would do it. Brendan might do it. Yeah. What about the new COO, Rob? We don't know don't him know, yet. Don't know him too much yet. So. <laughs> we need to suggest that maybe. It'd be the first know. question that we have for him on the show if he ever comes on. Yeah. Hey, do you do the Badger dance? <laughs> Or we can put a worker proposal through. Can you guys do the badger dance for us? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll give you 100,000 EOS. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's move forward. So the actually in Seoul, this weekend, uh, I'm going to be there in Seoul, South Korea. I'm going to a meetup with uh, it's EOSIS, but there will be a lot, lot of other representatives there, including Korea's and many other block producer candidates. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Saturday, May 19th, um, we're going to have uh, multiple speakers, including myself and all those other block producer candidates as well. So... Looking forward to that uh, well, big travel week. Have you have you good luck on your trip, Kev? But uh, have you thought about a topic for that uh, meetup? We're going to be talking about the power of EOS okay. and also the opportunity available, uh, why you should get involved, and um, basically describing why this is a, a new brand of internet. Right? I mean, for so many reasons, and why it's it's more than just. I mean, buying tokens and, and watching the price go up is a lot of fun, but there are more ways to get into it. I would say than just uh, hoping for the price to go up, which will probably happen. I mean, we're not price talkers by any means, and we don't know anything about technical analysis, but we believe in EOS. So if you'd like to get involved, certainly there are so many opportunities right now in new tech companies or you know, as a part of a, a media like us or whatever the case is, right? So anyway, we'll be talking more about that. And, um, uh, on that note, I believe we also know of the, another one that's happening around the May 18th, 19th uh, in, in China. Uh, it was we, we just recently found out about it, but it's supposed to be really big. It's a BP summit, I believe they're calling it. So uh, that that one's also going to be interesting. Wow, where's that where's that one held? I don't know if I've heard about that one yet. Um, so Myra from Eros Gravity was tweeted it out, and uh, I believe oh. we can find a little bit more about that uh, on Twitter, um, uh, and we'll post it in the chat or somewhere else as well too. Good deal. Yeah, we'll get that link and we'll put it up. Um, of course, in China, sometimes we feel like we haven't really heard as much from them. It's a very active EOS community. And you said it well during the EOS Union interview. You asked them about EOS in China and they said, oh, it's very famous. Mm-hmm. And Dan BM Bitemaster is also very famous and loved in China. 
uh, which is great. So, and he, and like they said, well, he is one of the, or he is the only one who's made three blockchains at this point. Or is about to. Yep, working ones. Workable. Exactly. So, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's been three hours, folks, in yep. the show. So, <laughs> so, anyway, we'll wrap this up, Blue Jays. What are your final thoughts here of the week? Um, good to see the community coming together, uh, gelling. I would say we're we're gelling. We're we're you know, we're um, definitely calling out the right things where people are putting their their individual selves aside and and sort of working together at this point in time, even though there's individual successes to be had. I guess, yeah. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing about this. It's in my mind, and I heard this said originally uh, by Sean at the EO Charlotte meetup. He calls it capitalism 2.0 where if you benefit, I also benefit, right? Because we all hold the same tokens. Um, and that's the great thing about, that's why folks are collaborating, or partly probably why folks are collaborating so well. I mean, because of course we need each other to be able to launch this network and make, make it successful, but also we're all vested into the same interest and all the incentives are aligned. Yep. So that's why it is kind of like a new form of capitalism. You can work hard for yourself, but you're also benefiting everybody else. And therefore they would like to jump in and help you as well. That's why working in EOS is a lot of fun. And uh, that's partly what I, I'd like to talk about more as well. I mean, you, you have so much support from other folks who are strangers, but they have the, the same ideals as you and the same end goals as you. And they see the same things and believe in the same things as you. So you end up uh, having wonderful working relationships with folks you barely even know. And of course, you gain friends in the process. And uh, you know, Thomas Cox talked about that before, about how many friends he's made now <laughs> uh, working in EOS. So. I think Thomas Cox now has what? How many? What's the total population of the world? Seven, eight billion? That's how many <laughs> friends Thomas Cox has. <laughs> it's not bad for, he calls himself introverted, so. Right, right. Yeah, not exactly, you know. So yeah, wrapping this up, of course, follow us on uh, Twitter and uh, Community Updates channel on Telegram is a great way to check in with all of our, whatever we're doing, basically. And we also put out other news blasts, like, for example, Don 4.0 release. We, we put that up there so you can keep up with the latest on EOS. Uh, where else should folks keep up with EOS Go? Uh, not to mention our forums at forums.eosgo.io. It's still a great place to get information and also to uh, collaborate and, and, and have conversations that are uh, a little bit more structured and organized and uh, also have a, a nice history to them as well. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Yeah. And we're always here to empower EOS uh, first and always. That's our goal. We're neutral, we're unbiased, and we're very proud to be here. So thank you guys for checking in. And we will see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Go EOS. Go EOS.